Well, I didn't think it was fair to leave you guys with just a video of testing this thing and some crummy old half rotted fence post. You know, that just wasn't fair, wasn't right. So, tonight, again, I'm getting back on the barn anyway. You can see off to the side, this log is missing quite a bit of bark. And uh, I maybe have less than 10 minutes into what I have right there done. But anyway, you can also see she's getting dirty. Oh, poor thing's getting dirty. I feel guilty about it, but at the same time, that's exactly what it was made for. Uh, ergonomically, I love this. It really, it fits the hands well. Very happy with it. But anyway, now that we're back into the barn stuff, I've got to peel these logs anyway. We've got to cut housings in these queen posts yet, which will probably be the next video. I was going to do it tonight, but I didn't have a lot of time tonight to get to work on this. You can see we have some better lighting in here. We don't have the shadow that we normally have. So I finally, uh, I got a hold of a bunch of string lights and put them up. There's a bunch of 100 watt outdoor light bulbs in it. And because I'm really sick of screwing around with the halogen lights, they just, they don't last out here, especially in the cold and just everything strung up all the time. But anyway, so that being said, I thought, you know, why not? Let's do a real test on this thing. See how it works in a big log. The bark on this, you guys saw it before, this got dragged through a sandy mowed cornfield and the bark is just packed with dirt and grit and nastiness and I'll tell you what, this thing held up really well. I do not have, I have no dings and no nicks in this blade after going through all that sand and everything starting the cuts and I started a few cuts into a, a couple of spots where it was just packed with sand. And I tell you what, it just went right in like a champ. It actually is much, much, much easier than the bark spud I was using, and it's a lot easier than the chainsaw that I was using. To be honest with you, bending down just right with that chainsaw, that was a killer on my back. But <clears throat> here I'm low to the ground. I'm actually quite comfortable working that way, if you can't tell the way I work here a lot of times. But uh, anyway, it's... I'm happy with it. I'm very, very happy with it. So without further ado, we're going to show this thing in operation in a real log, not some crummy piece of crap old cedar fence pole stuck in a vise because uh, I feel a little bit guilty leaving it like that with you guys. So stay tuned. I'll catch you on the other side of it. Well, let's do a little test here. I'm dying to test this on real bark. Make sure that uh, I made it long enough. It's a little over two feet long, and this bark on this log, these are really, really tight bark. And this would be an excellent test to see if this is easier than, see if this is easier than that bark spot I made. I'm a little nervous to show you guys, see how well this works, but this is the maiden voyage in a log, not on a half rotted cedar fence post in the shop, but uh, it was a good test too. But I want to see. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Let's see. Oh, it's getting dirty, guys. No chips and dings. And I still have my edge so far. That's going to be the real test. See how well this, uh, this knife handles. Some dirty bark. And how it handles round knots. Oh, I think we have winner boys and girls and guys like Thomas who are still confused about it. I don't even have to say the name Russell anymore. He just knows. That is about perfect width. 
I am super happy and I keep checking this edge because that's going to tell me how well I did on my heat treat. Remember this bark is dirty. A lot of sand packed into it. A lot of that stuff but uh, that bark is still tight on there too. I tell you what. Get ambitious here. Oh, I think we have a winner. Look at that. Well, it's working for its intended use. Let's move some of these. without doing the chopping. That's with the chopping. So much easier. That's a knot right there. Boy, it almost feels wrong to do this to this thing. <laughs> Look at it getting its maiden voyage. I keep checking the edge just because and also the handles these handles aren't epoxied or anything on now T. Wagner had mentioned and he's right most draw knives the tangs go all the way through the ends of the handle then they get them red they put a metal cap over it and get that end of that tang red hot then they peen it over and a lot of that is when you're you see your draw knives or your handles are straight back. You figure you got to have something to hold that wood on there because you're constantly doing this with it. You're constantly pulling it, the handle straight back. What I was thinking on this, I was thinking that with my handles out here, there wouldn't be a lot of pressure pulling these things off. And all I did was burn these things on. And I got to be honest with you, that. Uh, they're really tight. I can't pull them off right now. I, I'm assuming that over time these might shrink a little bit and they might get a little loose and at which point I'll epoxy them on. Like I said, this one's for me. When I go to make these things to sell them, I will probably do the metal cap and peen them over and all that. But I kind of just wanted to use it, get it done, so I slapped these handles on it, turned them on the lathe, and uh, I love black walnut. Such a nice nice wood but and I didn't get a really uh, I didn't get a glossy the handles are kind of a rough finish so I can get good grip on it but I gotta be honest with you I'm really impressed with how that works I mean just I mean that bark is tight and it's just kind of getting person close to another log but it's just kind of getting after it This is some more mature bark down here. And that's some pretty rough stuff. I know I'm kind of on my hands and knees, but it's a lot easier, a lot easier body-wise than the uh, bark spot I made. So, anyway, there's a little test for you guys in a log. Oh, I wish I wasn't right on top of another. So there, but now I got to shine it up again. That's going to drive me nuts. I got to make a leather sheath for it too, but um, I want to keep checking as I go. Because I've never had to temper anything this long. And I was very concerned about it because I had a hard time getting it heated up. And if you do not get the temper right, and Jesse the Samurai Carpenter, he made a gorgeous 
he forged out an absolutely beautiful chisel. That's one of the nicest looking chisels I've ever seen. It was absolutely beautiful. He took a lot of time making it. He just, the guy is a talented guy. You know, a lot of people think he's quite full of himself, but I tell you what, he's got the knowledge and the skills to back it up. But uh, he took and forged a chisel out for himself, put a twist in the tang, everything, just a beautiful chisel. He did it uh, as a Japanese style chisel where it went into the handle. He took a uh, he took a steel file which was 1095 steel, which is a pretty pretty high carbon steel, and he forge welded it onto a piece of mild steel, and it just it came out beautiful. The forge weld was nice, everything was nice on it. But when he went to use it, he couldn't hold an edge on it. He uh, he had it uh, too hard. So what happened is. He'd go to use it in the wood, and a piece of hardwood, the chisel would chip on him. It wouldn't hold the edge, it would just chip out. So he asked for advice on what he did and what maybe, where did he go wrong, if anybody knew. And the closest I could figure, I think he had his quench right. He did it in water, which I'd have to look up 1095, I've never really worked with it. But he only did a 400 degree temper on it, and I think I bet you he had to be up closer around five or 600 degree for it to really temper. Every steel is a little different. So when you watch a video and they say, yeah, I'm working on this mystery steel that not really sure what it is, and they go to heat treat it and all that, you can't really heat treat a steel properly unless you know what it is. When you know what it is, there's a lot of resources out there where you can look and say, okay, I need to follow this process. I need to quench, like this one called for quenching twice. So first, you had, first it had to be normalized. So get it above magnetic, let it air cool. After you normalize, you anneal it. So it goes back to above magnetic, slightly above, and then you got to bury it in vermiculite or perlite. To, uh, or something like that, or ashes, so it cools down really slow. After it's annealed, then you can do your grinding on it. Well, after you do your rough grinding, you never take it all the way down because that edge will get so thin, likely to crack on you in a quench. So after you, you grind it out and all that, for this 1080 steel, I had to quench it twice. So that means get it above magnetic, the whole cutting edge, twice, quench it twice, and then for this kind of steel, this can go in the oven at 400 degrees for an hour. And that's what I did. I followed those, I followed that process pretty close, uh, except for the annealing part before I ground, which that won't happen again, but like I said, it's holding pretty good, and I've got just a little bit of flex in there. Not a lot, just a tiny little bit but it's holding an edge. So that's what I wanted. I wanted something that I can spring this thing a little bit if I need to, if I'm getting into some pretty heavy stuff, so there's a little bit of give in it, but it doesn't bend. It springs a little bit and it goes right back. But uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm actually... All right, what do you think, guys? You think we got a winner here? I think we have a winner. No slip in the handles or anything like that. These are just burnt on, like I said, there's no epoxy, no nothing holding them on, they're just burnt on. And, I mean, I'm pulling on those, there's no give in them. That may change over time and we'll address it when it happens, but I really want to test these out really well before I try to make these things for other people. Any tools that I'm going to put out of here are going to be tested to the max. And... What better way to test it than on your own project when you really need it? If this thing, uh, this thing were to break on me, I could muddle through just fine. But I'll tell you what, after doing it like that, I could see why people really like log peeling knives because that just sold me. I am now a believer. So if you like this one, leave a comment below, leave a thumbs up, subscribe. For crying out loud, just subscribe. I've been trying forever the last month. Well, the last two months to get from five to six thousand of you guys watching and I'm not quite there yet. I'm like 170 shy. That's no good. That is no good at all. But uh, 
there's my YouTube plug for the night. So if you feel like it, subscribe, thumbs up, comment, share the videos on Facebook if you guys have Facebook, if you feel like doing that. If you don't feel like doing any of that, no problem. I won't hold it against you. But uh, anyway, so I'm going to leave you guys there with that. And thanks for following along on this build. This was a lot of fun. It was a really nice deviation from what we've been doing with this. The, the weather was kind of nasty and crummy anyway. March has been miserable up here. So I figured we'd do something different, kind of fun, give you a peek into what's to come in the future on this channel. So anyway, have a good night, everybody. I will catch you on the next one.